All right, we're gonna give everybody a few minutes to trickle and just know if say anything, you know, peanut gallery, it'll it'll show up on video, so I'll be able to hear you. Buy Dogecoin. Yeah. Buy Dogecoin. Buy <laughs> Dogecoin. Back to uh Oh yeah, Tyler, what's what do you do you end up selling? No, I'm still holding. You just a holder? Yeah. I'm holding too. I sold the 39, it went up to 70, and you held on and now it's back to 38. Yeah. Like yeah. Cents per coin. <laughs> my daughter bought my daughter <laughs> bought it at four. We're gonna sell a solar system with Dogecoin. We're gonna have somebody pay for it with Dogecoin. I actually thought about doing that as accepting cryptocurrency yeah. for, for payments. Why not? Oh, How so you doing, good. Johnny? Good. How are you? Good man. Uh and your friend? Chandler. Chandler. Yeah. I remember Chandler. Chandler. He didn't have a beard, but I know I didn't. But there's name tags up here if anybody wants them, then obviously somebody brought them on. So thank you. Um, yeah, we'll give everybody a few more minutes to trickle us. Steve for donuts immediately. <laughs> yeah. Steve and Weber and I have worked together for a long time. That's who this gentleman is. Um, he's working in solar currently and he's gonna help me do the training. So he'll be kind of our number two guy to to um, teach everything. <laughs> Hello, come on in. I can show so I just can't work a plastic box. Yeah. Steven's specialty so right sheet. Yeah, no, wherever you want. Those those post-its are for uh, writing down something a little bit. Yeah, you let your eyes adjust. I know it's right out there. Um, but yeah, Steven's specialty right now is, is remote appointments. So for all of the people on Zoom, hopefully you can hear me. Um, Stephen will be heading up the training for doing remote sales because that's what he's doing exclusively right now. And um, it you know, makes the job pretty easy when you can qualify things. We'll even be setting up a position where someone would be, let's say, an appointment center or qualifier. To you know, People oftentimes will click on something for solar or call a company and they just have some basic questions. So we don't want to drive out and you know, go to their house and waste their time and waste our time if they, we just want to answer their basic questions. Um, that said, what's the official time? Who's got my, uh, my clock? I also should put Three a stopwatch up here. Three minutes still? Okay, cool. Anybody have any questions, write them down because at the end, we're gonna do a Q&A, a longer Q&A to talk about anything that I haven't covered or that you specifically wanna know, but we wanna keep the presentation short. I'm really just gonna break down everything um, in detail over the course of about 30 minutes, so. Um, with that said, I'm going to grab a stopwatch so I don't go over. Libby, do you have a page or folder on stopwatch? That's my streaming. I got a stopwatch right here. And this that won't thing, help. This is though. called a watch. Yeah, that's an old. I, you, I know I'm Gen X. That still man. works. It's a watch. Millennials. Mm -hmm. Actually, Justin's maybe going to watch. He's got a really cool smart watch. Johnny, you still have your smart watch? I got a dumb watch. No, you heard of it. I got a dumb watch, but it's got a stopwatch. Oh, okay. I was like, if at least five people show up of the people that RSVP, that's like a good turnout, right? Um, so let's go around the room real quick. Just who's here again, Stephen Whitmer, um, Olivia, my assistant, Ray, I met you. He's uh, going to be applying. Just Tyler owns the solar. He's learning from the beginning, though, because, you know, he wants to yep. always. I forgot it. Yeah. Uh, Keaton, I think, if you're a recruit of, of this gentleman. And then Johnny, I've known for a long time. He was actually one of my first customers way back in the day. And uh, he's got some opportunities to look at new positions, new jobs. And might want to, I mean, he's, he's got a leg up on everybody. He's already had solar for longer than I have. Uh, and then Chandler was actually the guy that answered the door. Right, knocked on Johnny's house. I'm surprised you remember that. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> oh, dude, that was one of my first yeah, go rounds, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I was yeah. Totally yeah. Um, and then is the gentleman I haven't met? Blue? Uh, Blue? Yeah, I moved here back in January from California. I learned the solar game in Idaho. Gotcha. So, do you have any experience in California? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm here to learn. So, that's all we're here to do is teach you how the job works, and you decide if, you know, hey, that sounds like something I want to continue doing, and I'll, I'll break down how the training will work. And lastly, I just want to text you okay. at uh, 9 o'clock last night. <laughs> yes, and uh, I didn't get the time. Well, is it 9 or what was it, 10? I think we, we, we messed up with time zones. I've had a lot of that through the Indeed and the job application. I've had people of different time zones on the webinar. Yeah. Like 9 and 4. <laughs> That's what I'm pretending. Well, if you, imagine if you showed up at 9, but you were late, you'd still be really early. But uh, 
Uh, Vernon Jacobs. Oh, right. I spoke with you on the phone. Oh, nice, Jake. And you were talking about your trip to California. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody on the webinar, it'll be on the slideshow, but parked outside is the truck I uh, drove across the country in that's actually solar powered. And so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm Josh. Uh, started Awaken Solar and Awaken Energy is the official name. And what the goal of Awaken Energy is, is to basically start training people to do solar ethically and the right way and, and be knowledgeable at it. So to provide full-time training. So everybody has a little post-it here. And if you're on the webinar, you can just, you know, type it in the chat or keep it to yourself if you want. But if you can grab a post-it, a pen and write down why you want to work in the solar industry, or if you've had experience in the solar industry, or like Stephen and myself are currently working in the solar industry, what was your why? Why did you want to work in the solar? Why do you love your job now? I'll give you guys a couple minutes to think about that, write that down. Um, we're also going to, the reason if you want to post it, note, I've got some, um, some freebies to give away, and you'll be able to get one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, just grab one. Give me this right here. Yeah, so why do you want to work in the solar industry? Anyone want to volunteer their answer? Go ahead. I want to um, help people become more energy independent. More energy independent. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, they're completely reliant on an outside source for all of their power, all of their energy. And one of the reasons I built the truck is to show that if you have an electric vehicle and you have solar, you're not completely energy independent. You're completely self-reliant. You can charge your transportation. You can run your house with your solar and electricity is, you know, it's not going anywhere. And um, it's a really great reason to, to invest in solar. And uh, I know somebody probably wrote this or maybe they're thinking it. One of the reasons they got into or they want to get into solar is potentially to make more money. And that's OK, too. Um, but I do want to show that. In solar, my why and the reason that we started the company is to basically help as many people go solar as possible. Come on in, guys. Travis, you might have to walk around behind there. Um, to help as many people as possible go solar and to do it ethically because that's one of the things that I'll show you in the presentation that's not currently being done. We basically have a uh, shortage of ethical sales reps and companies even. I mean, there's there's one big company, Stephen knows the name, we won't mention them because this is being recorded, but uh, their MO and they're a nationwide company in, in many states, they're even highly reviewed, their MO is to undersize people's system. So if you you know have a power bill, 150 or $200 a month, you go solar with them and you expect your full power bill to be offset by solar, they always will give you a 60%, 50%, 70% offset system. So now you've got a solar payment and your power bill is still a hundred bucks. And you're like, this solar thing isn't what it should be. And it, it's really because of their unethical practices and sales that causes these problems. And it hurts the whole industry. So my goal is to train all of you to do things the right way, to do it ethically, to make sure that you've explained things and you have happy customers because that truly makes the job a lot easier for you afterwards. If the customers are happy, they went solar, they're going to refer new other customers to you. They're going to talk to their neighbors and friends and family. They hate solar. Guess how many people hear about that? And Everybody on their Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I had a customer just recently posted how happy they were with their solar. They waited a few months. Their production was more than, than we had quoted them. And the first reply they get, is someone saying, I hate solar. I have solar. It's terrible. It's not making what it should be. I even tried to reach out to the person and say, let me help you. Let's see how we can solve this. And they went with the same company I was talking to. They had a 60% okay. you know, offset. And I said, hey, we can try to go with the tell the company that you expected this, and maybe they'll be able to add some panels if we fight. And they just said, no, you know, I don't want to mess with it. So people really want to complain, but you know, that solving the problem is, is difficult. So here's a picture of me with a drone shot with uh, a lady who got a new roof and solar. Uh, when we do training in depth, we'll go over why roofing and adding. You can even see some trusses here where she was at, actually extending this section of her, um, her home. And there's a ground mount down there. That's in, um, oh gosh, I'm going to blank on the name. It's towards Weezer, Idaho, out in the, the hills. You see the big John Deere tractor next to it, a big ground mount. Uh, and solar can go anywhere. It, they're like Lego blocks to make electricity. So the next thing is sort of the truck. And that's where I'm charging in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Um, I like to say it gets unlimited miles per gallon. And again, the reason I did that was to just show that it's possible to do a lot more with solar than we're currently doing. And the batteries in the truck can actually run my house for weeks, 
right? And so if there's ever a grid outage, my driveway is now my power plant and I don't need anything else. And, you know, this is a Frankenstein vehicle for sure. But there are things that we can do, battery backups, generator backups even, to give people the exact same effect. And if they buy an electric vehicle, um, you can calculate exactly how many kilowatts based on how many miles they're going to drive every week to say, okay, you need five more solar panels than you, you know, you would for just your home to power your electric, your electric vehicle every week. Um, so I want to get into some more whys that people wrote down, and we're going to do a drawing at the end. Um, who else can volunteer their why? Whitmer, I know you've, you've got a pretty good one. Um, mine is just, I originally got into it to, uh, to make money and to provide for my family, but as I got into it, and I saw what the industry really needed is somebody, is people with integrity to protect the industry itself because I'm really into renewable energy and to protect the customer against what you just described. Right. That's my passion. And Whitmer is an older guy with a watch and uh, he's, he's, a, he's a, bit of a, a bit of a gearhead as well. He's got a lot of vehicles, but hasn't driven an, or owned an electric vehicle yet. We're going to work on that. On this. I'm, I'm deciding on which one. Right. Which one to, to get next. But yeah, the... The idea of just making money, that's really one of my next points because that's a that's a big thing for a lot of people is sort of how the solar industry works and how much money can I make. So let me just break that down. With power companies, you're always paying rent. Everyone who's ever owned a home has basically paid their power bill every month, usually on time, and they never get a return on any of that money. All that money is gone, it be thousands of dollars per year. Um, I won't pick on them, but there's someone in this room who pays over $5,000 a year for electricity, right? And it adds up. If you start to add up over 10 years, wow. And then the power rates always increase, right? The cost of living due to inflation and all the other reasons that, you know, we have to generate more power as growth happens. Solar is ownership. So how many people in here rent their car? There are no hands up. I don't know if there's anybody on the webinar that rents a car, but it's okay if you do. Uber and Lyft are great. They're pretty cost effective, but over the course of a year, if you drive a decent amount, you're, you've spent a lot more money than you would have to own a car, to have equity. And so owning your own power plant is really one of the biggest reasons why going solar makes sense. And again, if we look at the power rates over the course of 10, 20 years, I mean, who wouldn't want to invest in a stock that have that graph, right? And that's literally now what you would be selling in the position. So the whole job is making people understand that they're already paying rent and they need to invest in solar for ownership. Depending on which market you're selling in, if you're selling remotely, maybe in Texas, but like in Idaho as well, the mindset's not necessarily for the green and the sustainability. That's icing on the cake. You do get some people who will invest in it just because they want to you know, do their part and, and invest in renewable energy. Um, but really, it always comes down to the money for almost everyone. And you have to make that make sense that this is what you're currently paying. And we can now levelize that with solar. And it's not free. That's another thing that in the industry, you'll see ads that say free solar. And it's a lot like automobiles where there's financing that gives you the ability to go solar with no money down. So it's great, but we want to make sure we disclose all of that to our clients. Basically, everyone needs to know exactly what they're getting into. And um, so just to get back to the income potential, if you go, you know, Get someone to go solar how much money do you make right it's a commission-based job so that means that you're not getting a base salary right you're training here for free you're learning about the job next week if you continue to train we'll be doing full-time and in just a few weeks maybe a month to eight weeks at most uh, you'll be able to do the job completely you'll be able to sit down with someone either online or in person and explain the ins and outs of solar the power company how they're going to save money and hopefully sign them up for solar um, what that, how that works, depending on pricing and the companies and the products that the, the person chooses to invest in, your commission can be anywhere from one to three, maybe four thousand dollars per job. The average solar rep, Tyler, does how many jobs per week? Uh, one to two. Yeah, it's a couple jobs per week. So you're you're running around, you're doing a lot of appointments, but you're getting one or two successes per week. You're 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 keeping a, a steady income by steadily working. So it is hard work. But the income potential, this is just one of my check stubs. I don't live there anymore, but this was just a few months into the job. Uh, I believe this was my third month in, and I was at $15,000 uh, total, and this paycheck was with $6,600 commission. So probably three to four jobs um, were in this one-week paycheck, and 
I love this picture. This is in uh, Las Vegas. It was a Louis Vuitton shop. It has a bunch of old solar panels. So when people say they don't like the way solar looks, I like to show them this picture that Louis Vuitton was using it in their advertising. Um, so you make enough money, you can buy a Louis Vuitton bag. Maybe that's what Pamela wants. Um, or if you're like me, you can go crazy and buy a solar powered uh, an electric truck and make it solar powered. But the income is there. It is hard work though. It's, it's not easy. It will have its ups and downs. Um, one of the things that I will train on is, you know, the ups and downs of the job, how to manage that psychologically, how to deal with, you know, someone saying no. Um, one of the easiest strategies to kind of think about is every no is just one step closer to the next yes, right? So you get turned down, it's not personal, right? They, they maybe just didn't understand it. Let's go back and strategize. What did the person say was their main objection? You know, how can we overcome that? Maybe we didn't make things clear enough. Maybe they were just, you know, never gonna go solar. Maybe they just wanted to get their questions answered and that's okay. Um, but having the ability to basically understand the industry, understand the nuances, um, makes solar a lot easier to sell and your success rate will just keep going up as you get more experienced. And again, if you have happy customers, the job gets so much easier because once you have 10, 20, 30 customers and maybe five or six of them refer people to you, you know, you, your job gets a lot easier. Johnny's referred people to me. I know he even came to a, uh, a fair for me in Twin Falls of all places. I convinced him to drive two hours to Twin Falls to say hello and be a, a living testimony. Yeah. And I think I got him a referral check out of that. So it ain't worth it. Get him some gas money. Chandler too. Yeah. Um, so pop quiz time. Steven, you are not allowed to answer. Yeah. I know, right? And it's okay to not know. It's it's kind of hard to see from this one <laughs> picture. Yeah, he's seen this. But there are three installations in this picture, house number one, <clears throat> two, and three. And they all have solar. House number three, it's right here on the back and right there. House number two. It's here, here, and here. There are two panels, so they've got three arrays. Panel number, house number one is one array split up because there's a roof vent right there, probably from the kitchen and the stove. So this is two arrays, three arrays, one array, one, two, three. You don't have to pipe up, but does anyone see any problems with array number or house number one, two, or three in this picture? It's not easy. To the untrained eye, you say, well, it looks like they all three have solar, right? Oh yeah, Tyler, you're excluded too. I can't really see it. Man. Yeah. Well, my, my first answer is B. None of them. Work. Yeah. They all look fine, right? Yeah. So there's your hint. Oh. On this picture, north is up, uh, east uh, is to the right, west is to the left, and south. So in the northern hemisphere, in, in America, basically, of all parts, you almost always want your solar to face <laughs> south, right? So the problems here are that you've got two panels on number two facing north, almost due north. You have number three, you can even see there's a little bit of shade from this house, and this is a two-story house. So they put, they filled up the back on the second story, and then they put panels here. So what's going to happen is, as the sun is, is south and in the wintertime, it's lower on the horizon, these panels are shaded by this house. And these are three different companies. So company one, everything's clean. They don't have any panels in the shade. They don't have any panels facing the wrong way. Obviously, the house dictates where you can put panels. And so on number two, maybe they could have squeezed two more panels in right here. That's exactly what this company did. And so that's the salesman and the company and the installers putting panels that are facing north that are basically just roof ornaments. They're facing the wrong direction. They're not facing the sun. That's a cardinal sin in solar. I mean, company number two should not should be out of business. And that's my goal is to train you guys to never work for a company that would do that. Because, I mean, that it's, it's honestly just, it's gouging the customer for a few thousand dollars more when they could have said, look, the panels won't be effective here. We'll downsize your system. We'll give you, you know, this many panels because that's all that we can fit in an effective place on your home. And then house number three, same thing. They just didn't do a shade analysis. These panels will work half the year, maybe nine months. But again, when the sun is low, this house is going to shade that section where they squeeze in an extra few panels. So squeezing in extra panels, while it makes the, the job, you know, more, um, more lucrative to the company and the sales rep, if it's an ethical issue, Oh, good. Automatic updates. Yeah. What's this one say? Remind me later, right? Tomorrow. All right. So this is one of the, the, the prime examples that I show you because you can see here, these are, again, three separate companies, two companies, two sales reps, two management teams that approve these, these jobs. And, you know, it, it's not really an opinion. I can show you mathematically why 
those circled sections of panels shouldn't be there, right? They just, they charge the customer too much money for panels that aren't going to work. Somebody at some point in time during the process should have said, whoa, 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 wait, we're, you guys realize what we're doing, but I'll tell you, that comes down exactly. from, from the leadership. Exactly. So the company is operating that way. No, Steve's exactly right. What what you see, just to go back, this is a do-it-yourself job, so this guy is, you know, is not prepared, but these people, the designers, the installers, the management, this was approved. The sales rep can submit a system and say, hey, we want two extra panels on that north side because, you know, I want to make a little extra money. And the manager should say, no, we, we can't put those there. They won't be effective. The install team can say, why are we putting those there? So, yeah, the, the leadership, the company is structured. And these aren't small companies, not, not one of these that did this. So, it's yeah, it makes you shake your head once you kind of have that trained eye to say, wow, this is and this is going on, you know, left, right, and center in tons of states and tons of markets. Um, and so then you have the people that want to do it themselves, and um, you end up with this. So shaded solar, but also you have exposed wiring, and these are different levels, even um, racking sticking out, just really sloppy. If you see it in person, it looks even worse. There's wires hanging off here, and then the racking sticking out there. I mean, I guess it works, and I guess they save some money, but. Um, uh, hopefully they don't have an HOA uh, because that, that probably shouldn't have shouldn't have been installed. But again, that's what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to make the industry better, make sure solar uh, consultants are professionals, and make sure that you know the customers are happy. And so that's our mission: is to create solar consultants that strive to be as ethical and as successful as possible. And that's my goal. Again, I'm the trainer. I don't succeed unless you succeed. So. Your compensation, you know, training is free. You take on the job, you go through training, you're hungry, you go out there, you run appointments, you get, you produce. Now the company, because I placed you in that job and trained you, I get paid from that. If you don't, you decide it's not for you, no big deal, right? It really doesn't uh, matter. I've seen people that were waiters be really successful solar company uh, consultants. I've seen people that were sales professionals come into solar and get burned out and quit and, and they didn't, didn't make it. So you really can have any background and do well in this job. It just comes down to, do you want to do well in this job? Do you want to commit to learning what you need to know to, to be a professional, to do it the right way? And if you do, then I'm here to help you. And that's, that's my job. So I'm committed to doing this. We're also working on a nonprofit. Tyler's involved with that as well. And we're going to be doing audits of companies and sales reps to basically make it public knowledge. And the nonprofit is to also um, lobby and protect consumers' rights. If you followed solar or the industry at all, like from California and other states, they are already a bit of ahead of us because they have more solar, but the power companies are kind of fighting it tooth and nail. And they shouldn't be. They should be embracing it and incentivizing it because we need distributed energy on the grid to make it more reliable. But there are public utility commission hearings and battles that I've been involved in and the nonprofit that we're going to also you know, make sure you all are involved in and, and incorporate that into your sales pitches to help you have more success and hopefully make the customers a lot happier long-term. Um, but that's really the whole the whole pitch. I, uh, I hope you all start to work with us and continue training with us. Um, we'll now go into the Q&A section. Let me end the, uh, the Zoom meeting. We actually, I finished early. Good, 20 minutes, nice. Not too bad. Uh, there's a little running out of time. All right, 40 minutes. Anyone have any questions, shoot me an email. Um, email's on the website, awakensolar.com. So we'll go into a Q&A period now and turn the lights up. Everybody guard your eyes. There we go. All right. We can end these as well. Shots my light. Oh, no, we'll, we'll keep the webinar on for the Q&A. All right, questions, comments? Go ahead. Uh, Couple is like when you approached me, you called me on the phone. I actually had other companies call. Mm -hmm. I went on a couple of interviews to see what it's all about. And I think the interviews were conducted by some folks who were like 19, maybe 20 years old, in shorts and t-shirts. And you know, they'll call me if I'm a good fit. So to be honest, that kind of threw me, you know, with. Uh, did you say we're gonna you're gonna get us hired into other companies? That's correct. Yeah, I, I don't I don't Awaken Solar is the training company, right? And companies like the office we're sitting in Idaho Solar, potentially you work for them, right? And I still work with you, training you to make sure that you continue growing and stay on task. You basically take some of the workload off of those companies, but 
I guess is your question, you know, how do we well, figure out which company? Yeah, because I mean, so many environments, like one place I went, I stood in the lobby during my appointment time, two doors were closed, all I heard was maybe conversations going on, and after waiting 15 minutes for someone to just come out to greet me, yeah. I wish they never did. I was like, well, you know, I knew I had this appointment today. I said, well, and I'll be honest with you, I almost didn't come today because of those two experiences. I'm like, well, so I don't like really... Solar customer. Say what? <laughs> I'm not going to do it because the other guy. Well, it's just, it was, it was just, I don't, you know, it's actually happy to walk in and see folks who are, you know, a little bit closer to my age. Uh, thinking <laughs> that I didn't know who they were trying to recruit. Not this guy. Oh, yeah, not, they, no, not me. I mean, I, I look so young. That threw me a little bit. So I was wondering, you know, I'm not real clear on your role as far as placing us into other positions. Right. Is it going to be with companies like that? So, it's so, yeah, exactly. So your answer, answer is no. No. <laughs> because that's what we're trying to prevent. It's very likely one of those companies you talk to were, were one of the companies I pointed at and, and that, that would do solar, do anything to, to make a buck. And, you know, it's like a car or anything else you can buy. You know, it's, it's there are people out there selling lemons, right? There are people out there that are doing unscrupulous things. My role is to help you find the right fit for you. So I have connections in the industry. I've worked in the industry a number of years. I know the good, the bad, the ugly, and ultimately, no, it is up to you. So I'll help you find a fit with company A or company B, and I know they both are reputable. They both do things the right way. And so, Did you work with the commercial side at all, or so yeah. So the last two years, I was selling before I built the, the truck. I was selling commercial only. So it was business to business. Um, you know, I've got uh, if you go to Caldwell, the big car wash out there. It's a hundred kilowatt system. It's as big as they allow in Idaho on one meter. Um, all of the Vacuums and the uh, the bay where they you know take your ticket and you drive up are covered with solar. And the building too. That answered a lot of questions. I feel a lot better. Okay. Yeah. No. Can, yeah. I, can I comment on that? Since go ahead. It's kind of directed at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, two ways. Uh, I can tell you, solar. A lot of people in the in their in their mind set is is a young person's game. They think, oh, it's new. It's electronic. You know, new electronics, kids, right? So they think hiring young people is the way to go. But I'll tell you, I come from real estate back in the day, so I know that older people make more money doing this. Because when you're talking about spending 20, 30, 40, I got a job right now, $120,000, you think they're gonna buy that from an 18 year old kid? Hell no. They see an older experienced guy, gray hair, raised a few kids, lived here for 30 freaking years. You know, it's like, this is somebody I can trust. So you actually make more money and are more trustworthy to these customers when you're talking about, this is a serious purchase and needs to be treated as one. And they the companies that hire these kids, these kids go out and they lie like freaking crazy because they yeah. just want to make the sale because that's what they're told to do. That's not your job. It's not your role. Yeah, because it was like two companies in a row back to back, and it was like 18, 19 year old kids sitting there. Yeah, yeah. This is for me. You know, so There's no barriers to entry, right? Like anybody can go out and start a solar company, right? You, you just kind of have to learn a few things, where to get panels, hire some installer guys, and that's the other problem is. You know, those, those inexperienced companies or the companies that aren't really operating with integrity, their installations will have problems as well. And so in a few years, that customer might have an issue. Company's not around or won't answer the phone, can't get it serviced, and they cut corners and use, you know, cheaper products or their wiring isn't, isn't done properly. They'll have a short and they'll have an issue. And again, that'll make them hate solar. So that's exactly what I'm trying to prevent, right? So sure. I, and, I and, and that'll, you know, over the next year, two years, three years, Hopefully, if we have success, we'll have, you know, th those companies, nobody will talk to them, right? Right now in Idaho, there's an issue that there are enough people that don't know enough about solar to be informed consumers. And so that's what the nonprofit arm that we're working on is going to try to fix as well. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry you had that experience. Well, but I, just, you know, it's I, just, thought, I thought it was kind of worth it. Yeah. To just no. see who else is out there knowing mm -hmm. I have this point today. And what you were going to present, you know, this is kind of want to get, I mean, they invited me for an interview, might as well go and get the experience, you know. Right. And that just kind of was a little take it back as well. Yeah. But I'm sure they probably promised you that you can make a whole bunch of money and, you know, they're going to. Uh, their, uh, their, their speech about money was kind of capped. You, know, <laughs> you make $80 if you make a sale. Or like this side of the they're probably recruiting you for canvassing. That's not going to go door knocking, man. That's yeah, all they yeah. wanted. Or not. Yeah, which again, I mean, a company that's inexperienced, that's the tried and true. I know Ray asked me about that. Why are there so many people going around knocking on doors and trying to sell solar? It's because it's the easiest, you know. That's what they've always done. Yeah, it, it's tried and true, right? It's, you hire a person, you pay them a few hundred bucks, you know, a few dollars an hour, a few hundred bucks a week, and 
They'll get you a few leads from door knocking if they're decent, and you can sell systems to people that never heard of solar that you, you teach them everything that you want them to know about it and don't necessarily teach them what they need to know. So uh, I'm very much relieved. Okay, good. I was like, I hope I did a little better job. Yeah. All right. Any other questions specific to the job? Johnny, I know you've had solar for a long time. You've seen me work. I can get Johnny to sign up for anything. Sure. We've had something right now. <laughs> but uh, what questions do you have about the job? Because I know you were, when we talked on the phone, you know, you had someone proposition you just yeah. like his story from from, from California, right? Yeah, someone I don't know like all that well, like, you know, so, so shit. I, they, uh, they recently moved to California. They got a job selling solar, mm -hmm. and he's offering to fly me down and take me around for a week and like help me close a sale or two. And he's like, he's like, I guarantee you, like ten grand a month, and you'll work ten days and then have twenty days off. Right. Like I could still live here and go down there for ten days, work, and come back. Right. So of course it sounds nice, but I'm like, that sounds really nice. Like, how can you guarantee me that kind of money unless yeah. you're just scamming people? You know? Yeah, I mean, some of the bigger companies, that they'll have enough leads coming in. I mean, it's literally just someone who passes the mirror test, right, where you put a mirror in front of their face and it fogs their, their breathing, they can do the job. <laughs> I mean, they'll, they'll have enough leads coming through because they're a huge company that it's just like you'll run through 20 and you'll get one deal even if you're terrible, right, just because they have a good size company to lean on. And in California, people know more about solar. It's just a numbers game there. Um, but that number actually sounds pretty low for California, cost of living, how would you like to make the same money and live in Idaho, yeah. as my pitch to you. And it's the same thing. It's one thing that I, had, I forgot to talk about, actually, I should have had a slide on it, is the job, to me, is the best job in the world because it allows you so much freedom to make your own schedule. You, you can block off times. You want to be with your kids or you want to go do something, you know, take the dog for a walk at the same time every day. You block off your account. You set your schedule, right? You want to work 60 hours a week, you'll make a ton more money than the guy working 20 or 30. But it's completely your call. You get to set when you want to take appointments, what days, what times, and that's a big amount of freedom on your part. And there's nothing else that you can sell someone that's going to give them a better return long term, right? You go out and sell cars or pest control or furniture or whatever. Um, it all just degrades where solar is an appreciating asset, right? The cost of electricity as it goes up, your customers are happier and happier. They're saving more and more money. You can go buy a house in 10 years that you sold and say, I did that. That's really, really cool to me. But the freedom of the job is something that I, I meant to touch on, but kind of forgot. Um, but yeah, have them drive you around for a few days in California. Go, go, yeah. go eat on their dime and whatnot. And yeah. Get wine and dine. Um, but get a real sense for kind of what they're offering and what the job is there. Because I've been in California. I've been in Hawaii. I've worked with companies in both those states um, just to see kind of what's coming in Idaho. Because Hawaii is probably 15 years ahead of Idaho. California, maybe 10 in other words, in Hawaii, every system has a battery backup, has a power wall. They're an island. They can't ship power in and out. So as battery technology increases, I'm like, that. this is what we're going to be offering in Idaho as soon as the costs start coming down. Um, and in California, it's just everybody that are kind of one solar, solar's everywhere. So again, it's just kind of a numbers game, um, a cost of living. And you know, I don't know a lot about California right now, but I don't want to live there. Maybe you do. <laughs> you know, so... It's, it's not to knock California. There might be somebody still on the webinar who's in California. You know, it is a great place for solar because it's such a solar friendly environment. The culture is so much different than here. But what's the number one state that's moving to Idaho? Yeah. You find those people, your job is just as easy here and the cost of living is less. So that's why I live here. Any other questions, Keaton? How's it going? You're all in, right? You've got to be here Monday. 10, like to be, 10, 11 o'clock yeah. sharp, train all day. Yeah, sure. Be running appointments in two, three weeks. That's nice. Love it. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> Coming from California, yeah, you, you touched on some good points. Um, so the cost of living high, also the cost of uh, power is a lot higher. Like PG&E is, uh, you know, yeah, people hate them a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I, think I was telling you on the phone, but my bills were like seven, eight hundred bucks a month for yeah, no, yeah. yeah. So um, what I what I want to do because I still do sell remotely in California. Mm -hmm. I really want to know Idaho a lot better. Right. I want to know. I want to know how to break down, dissect the utility bill. I want to know how they get their power here. I've heard stories about um, 
generating power from the melting ice caps. You know, I've heard all these different things that they get their water the next time. Hydro, I mean, it's yeah, hydro. It yeah. starts on the ice, ice caps. caps. Yeah, yeah. 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 The ice caps thing up. As far as I know, there's not a river from northern Canada all the way here. I don't know. I don't know. Snake River is going out for us. Yeah, basically, I just I want to know uh, I want to know Idaho's utility, and I, I need to if you can give me some little pointers, I'd like yeah. to understand. That. So now that's something that later in training we're going to spend you know a whole day maybe two on breaking down the history of, of Idaho Power, the last few hearings that they've had that related to solar, how you can really leverage that to have success and know what you're talking about because yeah, the power rate is less here. You know, they they advertise 20 percent less than the national average on TV on their commercials, right? Mm -hmm. But that's still, if you factor in the cost of living and you, you equate that with solar, the cost to get a solar system installed is probably about 20% less than California, probably more, right? So it's all relative, right? I, I tell people, it's like you go to Disney World, you buy a cheeseburger, how much does it cost? You know, $20, you buy a cheeseburger anywhere else, it's 10, maybe five in Idaho. So the cost to get your system here is less and power costs less too. So it's it's really relative, but yeah, we'll go into to high level detail on, you know, um, Summer energy and non-summer energy charges, tiered rates, um, the the all the, the PUC hearings, um, the different costs that Idaho Power has tacked on, the, what they say about solar. But really, the bottom line is they're they're putting in a lot of solar themselves, so it still makes fiscal sense for them to do it and make a profit. You know, why don't you invest in it yourself, Mr. Customer, and take the profit from Idaho Power and put it back in your pocket? Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of high level stuff that we can get into. You know, it sounds like you already kind of have a grasp on the basics. You've been selling solar. But, yeah, so you're someone we would kind of start at that advanced stage, which this afternoon, if you want to come back at 1 o'clock, we'll be training veteran reps. So maybe hang around and go and grab lunch and come back till then. But, yeah, that's something that we'll cover in depth during training. Because, again, I don't want anyone who goes on their first appointment to not know how to answer questions about, well, power is cheaper here. How has power changed in Idaho? You know, it's it doesn't seem like it makes as much sense to do solar here because it's less. You need to have an answer and sound really confident delivering that, right? Otherwise, you're going to lose the deal because you know, this guy didn't sound like he knew what he was talking about when it came to Idaho. So I talked a lot about California, but I hate California. I love Idaho, right? Um, anything else, guys? That's really you're doing the training today at one. Yeah. How do you not know? We voted on that board yesterday. I know, but I thought we were. You wrote about, it. I, I know, but I thought we were just talking about this. I even texted you. Yeah, no, today, because anybody who's a veteran who wants to learn about, so I'll do another training for people who, like this gentleman, or who, like Steve, he'll be helping me with that, of, of high-level stuff, if you want to just work on, you know, and like I said, with you guys, in two, three months, if you're still doing the job, like, now we're just doing stuff on, okay, this was their objection. What are our comebacks for that? How, how do we make sure we hear what they're saying and understand? You'll talk to all types, people that look at money much differently, people that look at solar and want to invest for different reasons, and you need to to pivot and, and basically explain why it makes sense to them, you know, for them, to them, right? Uh, because everyone's so different, trust me. And another good value to this training is um, if you decide to pursue this, you'll get into many, many situations where the customer you're talking to, a potential customer, is totally turned off by another company that they had a visit with and just totally turned them in the wrong direction. And you, you, this training will teach you how to take that and turn that around to an opportunity for you. They say, well, wait a minute, why don't you tell me what, you know, I always say, well, what do you think you know? And let me correct anything that's wrong. Company, you know, so. When company suck, we'll just call it company suck, when they show up, they give a bad pitch, and they have some guy in shorts that doesn't really know what he's talking about. And then the guy's like, "Well, I already have the second appointment with Pamela." And if you come in there, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna kill it. It, it just they actually make your job easier when a customer has talked to them and then talks to you. Now, when they talk to them first and they don't show up or cancel the appointment, that that's tough. They get but, totally turned off. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we've Stephen can tell you there's a few people that if they've already gotten a bid from that company and then we come in and show them that look, they did the math all wrong. They're misleading you here. You know, how can you ever trust them and why would you ever invest with them? And that's really the, the, the thing that we want to have you succeed with is integrity, doing things the right way, being knowledgeable. Knowledge, integrity, will have success. What is the utility inflation here in Idaho? So I read 6% then I read 3%. Yeah, it, I, would, I would say it averages around 4 right? There are periods of a five-year stretch where it'll, it'll spike. If we have another drought, right, it'll spike about 10 15% in one year. But the... You know, five-year, ten-year average, somewhere between three and six percent, right? So yeah, it's the inflation and and cost of power is just going to steadily increase. It doesn't 
really ever increase enough so that you hit that pain point. <laughs> By golly, if we have a drought this summer, the drought's going to get really easy because power rates will spike because we have so much from hydro. Like what he was alluding to, you know, how does hydro gets about half its power from hydro? So if there's not enough water, you know, they really have to cut back supply and, and that causes prices to spike. Well, I know power says the number one cause for rate increases is population growth. Because more people, more energy used, we're not building more dams. Right. The trend you know? goes out. Has anyone read my yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, I yeah. No, I read everything, dude. I'm yeah. just like you. I follow it. It might go through. Who knows? Just take off the dams, which means there's gonna be a lot more opportunity and need for the for power generation. And distributed generation is number one thing that we're gonna need. Um, I don't power will put in a lot of solar themselves. But uh, if they take the dams out, it would be a 10 year plan. But uh, it can still be a lot more solar work. A lot. I mean, Idaho already has a lot of wind, you know, and then the hydro. But uh, everybody's worried about the salmon. So, gotta save the steelheads. Oh. Yeah, and on top of that, you mean you got all these coal plants that have power to be 100%. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of and things that, that are. Boise has that as well. So, right. there's gonna be a lot more initiative of people in yeah. cities uh, going. Renewable. And they're not going to do cool opportunities to be. You're, you're, you're in the frontier of change. I was about to say that. They're not going to the re the reach those goals unless people go rooftop solar. There's just no way. But one of the reasons, again, as you become a veteran rep and you're, you're working with us long term, you're doing deals, everything changes in the industry. Not, but a lot of things will change pretty quickly. And being able to pivot and learn that faster than your competition, again, just you're raising the bar and that's what I love doing is learning. Okay, here's what the PUC just said, the file, how do we use that, you know, to, to show the customer what's happening and make sure that they're informed and they know how net metering works. They know what Idaho Power's goals are and why, you know, you investing in solar is actually helping them versus them saying it's hurting you. I mean, it's just so much fun to be able to evolve with the industry and, and sort of, wow, four years ago, I look back and see his system and what he has and it's still working great, but like, how has it changed now? And where are batteries going? And EVs. I mean, I think that's the next big pivot is electric vehicles. You know, people are going to want more solar because they're saying, "Yeah, I'm going to buy a Tesla in the next few years." I got to deposit down on the Cybertruck. Maybe it gets here in 2020. At least once or twice a week, I already get that. Yeah, we're going to be buying an electric vehicle. So how is that going to affect our solar? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I got a question about the solar panels. Um, I've noticed that y'all have, uh, you know, your finger to the pulse of what's going on. You're reading the articles, you're seeing what's going on as far as you know, do that. In California, they have laws that they've passed where all brand new homes have to be wired for solar, like specifically wired to be able to have solar. And they were even passing a new law, I don't even know if they did before I left, where all brand new homes it need solar on them. Yeah, at least a four kilowatt system. Right. Right. Which, which, so won't, which won't take care of the whole house. Is like that happening here where they're trying to put that in the legislation? No. 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 We can try to make it happen. <laughs> Again, get enough people, enough people on board. That, that's part of what the goal of our nonprofit will be is to try to make sure we can push back and, and get those those things that really help everyone. But the power company's not making as much profit. You know, that's, that's really where you're at. And so, again, yeah, California's policies, while some of them are terrible, a la Enron, you know, the deregulation of their power grid, which was part of what made power costs skyrocket there so much. It wasn't solar. It was at least like Enron um, doing things unethically. Uh, it It's coming, but, you know, Idaho is kind of one of the reasons I think the locals would say is it's, uh, you know, we like to be a little behind the times, right? And so you're not going to have any progressive laws go through like that probably anytime soon. It's possible. You know, we can lobby for it. We can try to help. We can, you know, show our support for um, for that. But really, I've, I've been in the Building Contractors Association for two years and getting builders to change their ways and, and do something more progressive here, it's an uphill battle. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to convince one family to go solar or one business than it is to convince all of the politicians to pass a law that says we should have it, right? But it's not impossible. I, I, again, I think it will come in the next 10 years not in the next two, threes. It's going to take some change, some some realizations of of what uh, solar can do on the grid, and it's going to be integrated with all the other power generation sources too, right? I mean, 
I'd be really surprised if they take out the dams because it is so much of our power that we sell to other states, like California. Um, yeah, good luck. If we want to try to get laws passed, I mean, I've, I've been involved in that process. We got consumer protection passed and a, um, a bill that disallowed HOAs from uh, denying solar to a home. You'd see that. You'd see solar installed on this house on the backside, but because it needed to be south, and which was on the front of the other side, the HOA said no. Even if it's a two-story house, you'd never see the panels. And um, yeah, we got we got we have had some progress with legislation here. It's not it's not out of the question, but something like a mandatory solar, I, I just don't see it in Idaho. I mean, I love it, but I don't see it. I'm not big on mandatory anything. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. The lady, like, our governor, uh, year ago or so. State. Yeah. But but also he's like it's the least regulated state, you know. And and Idaho Power, we're one of the few states that has net metering, but it's not. Uh, mandatory which is why it's kind of complicated it's in flux all the time it doesn't it's not the same legal process for how solar works with net metering as other states so it's yeah it's i see the other side of it though i see it as far as having choice right right so that's what i mean that that's i think here you're not going to see those same kind of policies probably in our lifetimes you'll have some you have some little things like i said like the consumer protection we had but the problem with that is it's not been enforceable. You know, there's companies still lying and getting away with it and violating the Consumer Protection Act. And it's like, who's, who's going after it? You know, who's following all the door knockers that are out there right now? <laughs> yeah, nobody. So, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I thought somewhere I read that uh, there's going to be a syllabus for train yeah. available. That'll be, so last thing, I don't know, a couple people have come and gone. But um, yeah, if you're on board, uh, I'll be sending out a link to the people on the webinar. I'll be sending out emails and links to you all, uh, text as well, and you opt in. And basically Monday, we'll go over the syllabus and we'll start breaking down everything in depth. So here, Monday, uh, what would be the slide, Tyler? You wrote down 11, 5, right? So bring your lunch, bring a little snack, come in. Uh, 11 a.m. Monday, we'll be doing you know, the first day of training. Um, if you can't make it Monday, maybe you still have a job or whatnot, we can work on a flexible schedule for anyone because, again, my goal is to get you to have success. It's not like you have to be here from Monday to this date. Um, we can start you at a higher level as far as, you know, if you're already a little more advanced and sold solar before, you're going to be on a different schedule. So but Monday, yeah, we'll go over the Three is right now. And then so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 to 5. That would be our, our training here. Uh, those three days, we'll be doing training online. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, we'll do like one-to-ones where I'll meet with you, train with you on things that we covered, maybe advanced topics. And so again, you know, this isn't some one-size-fits-all training course where everybody's starting at zero and everybody finishes and graduates on the same day. You know, if you're going to be ready to run appointments in two weeks, I want to get you there in two weeks. It's going to take you six weeks, then we'll get you there in six weeks. No big deal, but we're going to be really flexible on schedule for everyone. Hey, Josh, I was just thinking about schedule for Mondays. Mondays at 10, we have our team. 11. No, I'm saying my our team. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we well, we're team. starting at 11, so we'll start after you guys. I'm saying how much time do you need to set up? If we end at 11, that could be fine. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. I just, no, just thinking about it. We'll overlap a little, high five, shake in. Uh, I, I think my guys are probably going to stay. Yeah. yeah. That's so, I mean, I'll get here 10 minutes early and come in at the end of your meeting and just set up my laptop. Yeah. And so, thinking that was just easy. Yeah, yeah. No, well, if there's an issue, we'll figure it out. Um, is it uh, focused specifically on one specific topic uh, each different day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or all the same? Sometimes? That's kind of how we'll break it down. Again, that's what we'll break down on Monday is kind of what topics and what order. And, and if you, again, so if you already say, well, I know this really well, but I want to make sure I see that one. But again, I'll be recording everything. I'll be doing one-to-one -one time so we can schedule, you know, an hour or two block for any one person to come in and meet and go over what are you, what what's clear, what's not. We'll be having tests and quizzes just like we had today to make sure that you understand the knowledge, to make sure that you're there. And then once you actually get appointments and start running them, I'll be running them with you. So you're going to have support throughout the whole process to get you to be a professional solar consultant, right? And energy, because energy efficiency is big. That's what a lot of solar companies will do is just sell you a whole bunch of panels when maybe we should have had a little insulation and four less panels, you would have saved a thousand dollars, you know? Um, those are some of the things that I only partner with companies that do that as well. You know, smart homes, insulation, making sure that we're getting the right solution that the customer uh, needs or that they want. If they're a rich customer who just says, I want this battery, right, Steve? You say, okay, yes, sir. I'm not going to try to talk you out of it. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I think that's it. I mean, I don't want to keep anyone too long. If anyone wants to stay, 
a little longer. Our phone's over there. What, Steve? What's what's this? Uh, ten forty-five. Cool. So yeah, we we'll plan on being out here by eleven. And uh, with you. So yeah, I'm happy to stay and chat with anyone for We're a little longer. But again, um, just follow up with me, phone, text, email. I'll send out a follow up to all of you, and um, make sure I get your new info. I don't think I have anyone yeah. who's who's got. Um, yeah, I'll leave my number with you. Well, let me just go ahead and give my number to everybody. It's 208 917 3757. I know a few of you have it, but just shoot me a text that you were here. You know, 917 3757. Yeah, Chandler, shoot me a text saying, because I know I had your number years ago, but I'm right, sure I can have to say it one more time. 91, yeah, 208 917 3757. I'll I'll Josh, Josh. <laughs> we'll go back to slide one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks, guy. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I'm excited to, to do this. It's something I've wanted to do for a while. I've done it on and off with companies I've worked with, done trainings, run meetings, things like that. Um, but I think the industry really, really needs people that um, have support, have a team. You know, even if you want to work for a small company or a big company. Um, it's very unlikely they're going to have somebody who, who can actually help you a lot, especially in the beginning or even in advanced phases of learning about, I mean, a lot of them don't care, you know, to be honest with you about, Tyler was there in the last hearing, the Public Utility Commission and testified, I was there, but how many other sales reps and companies do you think were there? Yeah, very small number. So it's, yeah, but I mean, a lot of people testified by phone, maybe I missed some, but I, I definitely know there's a couple companies that were big that I expected to you know, they send out an email to all their customers, but none of the sales reps, none of the managers actually showed up to testify, actually called in because they're just like, yeah, if it, if it goes to crap beer, we'll go back to California or we'll go to Texas or whatever. I mean, they're just traveling sales guys. And that's fine. You know, it is what it is. It's never going to stop bad used car salesmen from getting a job somewhere. But um, yeah, I think people deserve better and I want to make sure the industry, you know, gets our best effort. So that's it. Ready break. I know a few of you will follow up with next week for sure with different positions and jobs. A few people in here, like Ray here, he's, he's worked with President Reagan. Some of us oh, weren't wow. even alive with President Reagan was around. Right? I got the name. It's like a screw up old president. <laughs> he's telling me stories about, uh, he's done a lot of training and education. And so, you know, he'll possibly be helping me design some training going forward or doing commercial sales. There's, there's opportunities for advancement guys too. You, you don't, if in two months you've, you've learned the industry, You've done some appointments, but maybe you haven't worked a lot in sales and it's really not just, it's not coming naturally to you. You're not getting it. There are jobs you can pivot to in the industry. Like I said, we can get you some phone appointment stuff and you're just qualifying appointments and getting paid by handing them off to Johnny or Steve or me or anything like that. So don't, I don't want anyone to kind of think that, again, the job is, is pretty open and there's a lot of opportunity for advancement or, you know, just doing the same thing or um, creating your own niche. I mean, we're gonna need managers, we're gonna need, uh, you know, all these companies are hungry for people and, and they need customers and that's really what keeps them alive. So if we can keep the installers that are reputable or doing things right, fat and happy, and you're fat and happy, and, and you know, maybe you're working directly with the installer, maybe you're gonna work for the nonprofit full time, right? There's gonna be positions there because I know it's gonna work. We've got a, a, a strategy that, you know, there's, there's a lot of interest for, uh, for getting memberships, for getting an organization to, to support advocacy for people's rights. So, um, yeah, I just didn't, I want to make sure I covered that. I said, thanks guys. No, I should call me. Yeah, man. <laughs> I've been talking since you're staring at him. Like, oh, I think this is very awesome. Friday is my free day. I can eat sugar. It was, I, was, I was wondering who I, I was saying, I know I talked to a lot of people, but I couldn't, yeah. Talk to my real no, man, if you fly you out and give me dinner and yeah, I, I take them up and see. Let me know what you think. Yeah. I mean, maybe you love it. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have one free day to see you. Okay. See you Monday here yeah. at 11 o'clock. So one hour later than today. It was 10, but we got to bump it back to there. All right, webinar people. <clears throat> Shad, good to see you in there. I'm going to cut this off and we'll chat after. Oh, End meeting. Oh, you, saying, well, you might be missing all of this extra stuff on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I ended, or no. How you doing? Yeah. I've got two